Yo, what's up guys? I'm back to making content and finally we see a return of iOS betas as well in iOS 14 beta 4. Now we should also be seeing another update to the public versions as well. So if you're on the public betas, there should be an update for you guys either later today or around the same time tomorrow. Now, today we also saw updated versions of watchOS 7, iPadOS 14, macOS Big Sur, and also tvOS 14. So just in case you are on those specific betas, you should be getting an update via the software update pages, so you can go ahead and install those updates as well. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get beta 4 of iOS 14 installed onto our iPhone 11 Pro Max here and check out what's new in beta 4. Guys, just stop trimming with these super inaccurate things and check out Manscaped, please. They have been so kind as to sponsor today's video and Manscaped is changing the way you take care of your personal hygiene down south. Now, two things, it's summertime and for most places it's getting balls hot out there, no pun intended, and you do not want to let things get out of hand down there or else your junk is going to stick. Now, number two is scissors is not in any way something you should be using anywhere near those precious family jewels. That's where the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 comes in. The Lawnmower 3.0 features a safe edge ceramic blade so you don't nick yourself where it hurts the most, but also comes with a 7,000 RPM motor to cut through pretty much anything that gets in its way. Some other super awesome features are the 90 minute runtime so you won't have to worry about charging up your device all too often and the quite visible LED light at the front makes it super easy to see where you're going should you not have enough light. Manscaped also has its own personal hygiene products to keep everything smelling good and clean so even if it's balls hot outside you'll still be smelling good. So guys don't wait any longer to take care of yourself down south and go pick up some Manscaped products today. I suggest starting out with the Perfect Package 3.0 which gives you a wide variety of products to take care of all of your needs and you can even use the promo code TECHREVIEW to get 20% off your order plus free shipping or you can always use that special link down below. So thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the main content. Okay, so just before we get started on some of the finer details of this specific update, I did want to make it clear that from beta 4 onwards, the new features and major changes might slow down just a bit. Typically in these longer beta cycles, we see the new features and major changes that need to be made in betas 1 through 3, and then after those releases, we see some more focus on refinement versus new features. So now that we have that little bit of explanation out of the way, let's check out some of the finer details in this specific beta 4 update on our iPhone 11 Pro Max. Okay guys, so we have iOS 14 developer beta 4 installed onto our device here. And as you can see, the total update size was just around 624 megabytes on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. The update did take quite a while to install, so I'm assuming that there's a lot of things in the background as far as uh, code being changed for this update. So the update does take quite a while. So if you guys are updating, just be aware that that might be the case for your device. And also be aware that you do need enough uh, kind of like storage to install these betas. If you have a storage problem, maybe you're low on storage, Apple recommends that you delete some stuff so that the update can go through. If you guys try updating and you don't have enough storage, unfortunately, Apple's system right now isn't exactly working 100%. So it basically just goes, um, acts like it's updating, restarts, and then doesn't really give you any notification that the update requires more data. So um, just be aware of that. Now, going into the settings app, let's take a look at some of the finer details of this update. If we go to the about screen here, as you can see, software version is, of course, iOS 14. We do have a new build number that is 18A. 5342E. Um, letter E at the end does indicate that we are on a less stable build than uh, what should be like the most stable would be like A, B, or C. Um, but just keep in mind that we are getting closer to more stable builds and in actually using beta 4 so far, this is actually really, really stable. Um, so let's go ahead, go down um, into the modem firmware here. We actually do have an updated modem firmware that is 1.50.23. That is obviously, that update is obviously to combat, um, you know, LTE 
issues, Wi-Fi issues, all of that. Uh, I didn't notice any any changes so far with this new modem firmware, but Apple does continuously update modem firmware just to make sure that they're on top of everything in regards to those potential issues. Now, there has been some things that have been fixed. So widgets, when I would go ahead and add a widget um, in this uh, kind of widget page, if I went to add something and I confirmed it, um, basically the phone would totally uh, kind of respring or reset. So it would be like a hard reset. Um, so basically what would happen is, let's go ahead and add um, screen time and we'll add a widget here. So before um, it would just go black and the uh, phone would respring. Now that's not happening. So it looks like the widgets page has been fixed here when adding any widgets to this page. Now, another issue I was having was specifically with Bluetooth. So um, basically when my phone would connect via Bluetooth to a device, um, the connection would just randomly go out or it would not be able to connect at all even though that device was ready to connect via Bluetooth. So I'd have to totally respring my device to get Bluetooth to work but it looks like in beta 4 I'm not having any issues whatsoever. I've tried it on um, AirPods like two different AirPods. Um, I've tried it on Beats headphones and some other uh, branded headphones as well all via Bluetooth and it looks like things are working a lot better. So it looks like that Bluetooth issue now is solved in beta 4. Now one thing that I did want to highlight in regards to uh, widgets is that unfortunately we don't have the weather widget available in uh, the widgets again um, that was taken out in beta 3 and we haven't seen that since but we actually do have a new Apple TV widget so if you want to go ahead and add an Apple TV widget you can go ahead and do so has all the three sizes that you need um, I, I'm assuming that this is just quick access to um, exactly what you want to see and you can go ahead and load that up on to your screen there via Apple TV app um, but yeah Apple TV app um, is now in the widgets. Do expect a lot more widgets from Apple in regards to kind of like their standard um, home apps and do expect weather to be coming back very, very soon. I think Apple just need to fix the updating problem with the widget and we should be seeing that in either beta five or beta six. Now, one thing we found in the settings app was actually exposure notifications being uh, kind of moved around. So it now has its own menu here in this main menu in the settings app. So it's no longer under privacy and then in health it's no longer in this menu. It actually has its own menu out here. And if you go into exposure notifications, you can see that it's not really enabled in the US here. But if you are in a country that has enabled exposure notifications and they have like dedicated apps and everything like that, this will look a lot different. Now, as far as exposure notifications go, it looks like Apple is getting some approval as they're kind of moving this into the main menu. So it looks like Apple is kind of moving forward with this and it is in full steam. So do expect some changes in the coming weeks to exposure notifications and maybe some additions of apps and uh, maybe some agreements with specific countries to start using exposure notifications in iOS. Now, another thing that I noticed in the uh, settings app here is when I go into my battery health, it's now at 96%. It used to be at 98, dropped down to 97 last beta, and now is at 96. So um, as we move on into the iOS 14 betas, it seems like the recalculation of my battery health um, is happening a lot faster. I'm not saying that the betas are necessarily destroying my battery health. It's just that the recalculations are calculating it a little bit more accurately. So um, do not be alarmed when you update to new betas or anything like that. Um, the maximum capacity dropping is just a recalculation and it's giving you more accurate information. So I just wanted to update you guys on what's going on with battery health. Typically it lasts a little bit longer for me as far as battery health, like usually I'm at 99, 98 um, at, at the time that I get a new iPhone. But it looks like with these new iPhone 11 Pro Max uh, phones, that that maybe battery health isn't going to last as much as what we were seeing before. Now, one major issue that was fixed is specifically with the iPad Pro keyboard. So the smart keyboard was having a lot of issues in beta three um, with the notes app and other you know typing apps, um, typing experience apps, where basically the keyboard would not work. Um, the keyboard and trackpad would just completely not work and I was having a lot of issues. Now in beta four, it seems like that has now been fixed and it looks like the keyboard is working as it should. So hopefully it stays that way because um, in beta three, I had so many issues and I could hardly use my iPad as my main laptop, which obviously is a big deal because I'm actually using it as my main laptop these days. So um, that is now fixed in beta four. Looks like we have no issues now and hopefully that continues on into the coming betas.
Now, one major thing that has now come back into iOS 14 is actually 3D touch mode. So um, if you have a phone that has 3D touch capabilities, that is now back in iOS 14 before it was just haptic touch. So it looks like Apple has uh, kind of brought that back here. And it looks like things have been rearranged slightly depending on where your icons are um, in these uh, kind of menus that are expand on screen here. And it looks like everything is just a lot faster. So when you go to a blank area, um, kind of getting it into this jiggle mode or um, edit home screen mode, that is working a lot faster now. And as you can see, everything works about the same. It's just faster when going and operating um, some of these expandable menus here in iOS 14. Now, another new feature that we did see is there's a new icon for the magnifier uh, utility. So basically the magnifier utility allows you to essentially magnify into certain things using the camera. So it now has a new app icon, as you can see here, and it looks like um, that has been updated and should be updated in the rest of the iOS 14 UI as we move forward with the betas. So far it's not, it's only updated within the search function here, but do keep an eye out for the updated icons across the iOS 14 UI in the near future. Okay, so those were some of the new features and changes that we saw in beta four of iOS 14. And if we missed anything, definitely leave those in the comment section down below. So we and everyone else in the comment section can go ahead and check out anything that we might have missed. Okay, so let's move on to speed and performance because everyone asks about speed and performance when it comes to beta releases. And in the fourth developer beta here, we are actually seeing the best performance so far in iOS 14. So when we ran benchmarks, we saw about a 4% increase between the single core and multi-core scores on the CPU, but what has contributed the most to visual performance increases across the board in iOS 14 was the extra 3% increase in the GPU performance. Now, just to be clear, we've seen about a total of 20% increase in performance between iOS 13 and iOS 14. So just through software updates, we see a huge performance boost in the GPU scores, which are responsible for the visual performance that you see in iOS 14 UI. So with those scores in mind, we are still seeing super good performance in the iOS 14 UI. And I'd say about at this point in time, this is the smoothest I've ever seen iOS 14 without any lags or stutters, anything like that. So if you guys are worried about performance when making a decision to update to iOS 14, I'd say those fears should definitely be eliminated based upon the performance we're seeing now in beta four. And we've also seen just kind of steady performance between betas one and three. Okay, so that was speed and performance, but what about battery life? I wish I had some crazy stats for you guys on battery life and how it's improved so much over beta three, but unfortunately things have stayed about the same as what we saw in beta three. Now that is still a lot better than what we were seeing in iOS 13 updates. So we are definitely still seeing better performance here in iOS 14 versus what we saw in iOS 13. There's just no change between iOS 14, beta three and beta four. Okay, so we went over new features, changes, speed and performance, and of course, battery life as well. And after going over all of those topics, I have to say that if you really want to check out the new features on iOS 14, it's actually super safe to install iOS 14 onto your daily drivers. Um, there's a little bit more refinement to the betas here, so I think it's really safe to update. Now, with that being said, performance can vary and your experience will definitely be different from everyone else's. But the general consensus is that iOS 14 is definitely stable enough to have on a daily driver and not to have any drawbacks to performance on a daily kind of performance basis. Okay, so that was iOS 14 beta four. And of course, if you have any questions about today's update, please leave those in the comment section down below. And if you want to hop onto the developer betas, check the link down below on how to install iOS 14 developer betas. And of course, if you want to get onto the public betas, just go head over to beta.apple.com. And that method is equally as simple. So you shouldn't have any trouble getting onto the betas if you want to get onto them. Anyways, guys, if you liked today's video, make sure to hit that like button, get subscribed, and also hit that notification bell button to stay up to date on our latest content. Of course, I am back to making content regularly after taking a bit of a hiatus there after getting a little bit sick. So we'll have some more content this week and you definitely don't want to miss out on those videos. So make sure to stay tuned for those. So with that said, thanks for watching today's update and hopefully I'll be seeing you all in some future content. Until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.